Welcome or welcome back to Instructed. Today we're going to talk about how you calculate shear flow. Now, before we get into this, I want to remind everyone that my link in the description below will save you 15% on a wide variety of materials at PPI2Pass, uh, and it also helps support our channel at no added cost to you. So with that being said, let's dive into this. If you are trying to build up a section, say you are taking some two by sixes, and we're just gonna pretend that they are full two by six for this application here. So each one of these is a two by six. And you're trying to make this all act together compositely uh, for whatever reason you're building up this beam. You need to make sure that your nailing pattern coming down into these, connecting everything together, is sufficiently strong to transmit the shear to make this all act together as a composite section. So here we're looking at a section of interest right there. Section of interest. And obviously our neutral axis is going to be smack in the middle, right? So we can calculate our shear flow Q equals shear flow. We can calculate our shear flow Q equal to V Q over I, where V is the applied shear on the section. In a simple span, this is going to be maximum at the ends of the beam. Q, we'll come back to in a second, and I should be familiar. I is your moment of inertia overall. So I is the moment of inertia, assuming that your section is acting compositely, right? Q is a little bit confusing. This is called the first moment of area. And this is actually known as the second moment of area. Those relate to their rigorous definitions. You might remember that IXX is equal to the integral over the area of y squared dA to get you your moment of inertia for whatever. Um, Q is actually equal to, you guessed it, just y over the area. All right, so simplified down, Q is equal to the area outboard of your section of interest times the distance from the centroid of your overall shape to the centroid of your outboard so the stuff beyond your section of interest if we turn the page here and we've got ourselves we know that each one of these is two inches by six inches which would be lovely if wood actually was sold that way, but it's not. And we know that our neutral axis of the whole thing is smack in the middle. So we'll throw our coordinate system on there, x, y. And we are interested in a section of interest coming through there, right? So we have the centroid of the area outboard of our section of interest. So outboard of our section of interest, we're opposite the section of interest away from our neutral axis. So our section of interest here is located at y equals three inches. And our neutral axis of the outboard section here is at y equals four inches in this case, right? 
So here, uh, we'll come back to that Q, but Q, big Q, is equal to, so we've got our area, which is two inches times six inches, times our distance, which is just going to be four inches up. So we've got 12, 48. Q is equal to 48 inches cubed. And our overall IX is equal to, I'm going to take a shortcut here. We know our overall height of this is what? 6, 8, 10. And our overall width is 6 inches. So 6 inches times 10 inches cubed over 12 minus, and then we're going to subtract out our ghosted area, our, our negative area here. And that negative area is going to be 4 inches wide. We could do two separate areas combining them times 6 inches cubed over 12. So our overall IXX is equal to, I'm going to grab the calculator for this one, so I don't screw up. 6 times 10 to the third by 12 minus 4 times 6 to the third by 12. 428. So for any applied shear on this, and it is dependent on your loading, the more you load this beam, the more you're going to need shear flow going on here. So Q is going to be equal to VQ over I. It's going to be equal to V times Q over I. And it's going to be equal to V times... 48 divided by 428. Q of V is equal to 48 divided by 428. An ugly fraction. Uh, <laughs> v times 12 over 107 in this case for this section, right? So whatever your maximum shear is in your beam, that's going to tell you that you are going to get pounds per inch. So if I've got a thousand pounds of shear, Q of 1,000 pounds is just a thousand times that fraction, 112 points five pounds per inch. So we've got pounds per inch, right? And we're trying to figure out a nailing pattern. Let's say we've got a really strong nail here and we've got our shear allowable for one nail is equal to 600 pounds. How often on center do we need those? Well. We can just take spacing equals V over Q, the allow, and we'll get 600 divided by our 112, 5.35 inches. So I would obviously call that out as 5 inches on center. Now, if we were trying to come up with an actual shear stress rather than a shear flow here, if we wanted Tau, tau is just Q over T. So say you needed, instead of a nailing pattern, you're just trying to glue this together and you've got your wood glue and you're following the instructions and you know that that wood glue is gonna get you realistically with all of your allowables on there. Uh, say our, our shear allowable is equal to, I don't know, a thousand PSI, right? We want to know, are we good? Well, we've got Q over T 
rigorously all the way out. Tau is equal to view Q over I T, where T is the thickness of your section. It's kind of your glue line width. So T for our section of interest here, T is just going to be that thickness, right? So in this case, we already know T is equal to two inches, right? And we've got our Q over here. So tau is equal to Q over T is equal to V times 12 over 107 divided by our two inch thickness here. So now tau is going to be V times 6 over 107, but now this is going to be in PSI rather than in pounds per inch. All right, so if we have 1,000 pounds per square inch allowable on our glue, then that gives us that T max equals 1,000 PSI. Gives us that V max, we can just multiply by 107 over 6. times 107 divided by 6 is equal to 17,833 pounds, which is a lot more than we would be able to get with our 5-inch on center spacing for our 600-pound allowable screws or nails, whatever you have. All right, so that is how you calculate shear flow. And if you were looking at a different section of interest, say, <laughs> say for some reason you had a failure on our, our same beam here. So we've made this beam. We've already got everything assembled. And somehow the wood in its drying splits right there. And you want to glue it back together. And you need to know if your glue is going to be strong enough to make that bond. So if we put this at two inches away from the end there, not much changes. Our neutral axis is still where it was, right? And the little centroid up there, the little centroid up here. We don't care about the lateral distance here. We only care about this vertical distance. So since we're looking, and that's for a moment and a shear in the strong direction. If we've got a weak axis bending moment or a weak axis shear, that, X, B, X. If we've got a weak axis, V, Y, no, V, Y, if we've got weak axis shear, weak axis bending, then you would do it just like normal where you were casting a line over that way. But in this case, we're not looking at that. We're just looking at a strong axis thing. So not much changes. We're still at four inches here. The only difference, so V is still obviously unknown. Q of V is equal to V is Q over I. We've still got the same for I, only Q has changed. Now Q, rather than being this whole area, is just this small area, two inches by two inches and we're still at four inches. So now Q is, if I can do math, 16 inches cubed, rather than 48 inches cubed that we had before, right? So Q, we'll call it Q2, V, is equal to V times 16 over 428 is reducible just a little bit. Q2 of V is equal to V times 4 over 107, which, not shockingly, it's the same relationship of our 16 to our 48. We've got one-third as much shear flow in this little 
wing out here that you need to glue back on as you head over there. So knowing that, you can work through the same steps to figure out if your glue is going to be strong enough. So that's shear flow. If you have any more questions about shear flow, please drop me a comment below. If this helped you out, like, subscribe, it really helps me grow. And again, if you want to help support the channel, link down in the description below gets you some really good deals at PPI2Pass. Thank you very much.